carry on then. Uh, welcome back. Hope everybody's well fed. Lots of energy for some more discussion this afternoon. And I believe we have Miss Walker again up for 2654465 Ontario Inc. in Port Carling. Ms. Walker, would you like to take us through this, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next application to be heard is Site Plan Agreement 09-21 in the name of 2654465 Ontario Inc. The subject property is known municipally as 9 Lee Valley Drive, Unit 1. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 229 of the agenda package. A site plan agreement application has been submitted to permit the construction of a 20,700 square foot boat storage building. Three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. The public works department has no concerns. The second submission is by Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official. The development services department has no objections, but has commented that hydrants and firefighting access routes will be required on the plans for permit submissions. Uh, the third submission is by Craig Douglas, the District of Muskoka Manager of Development Engineering. The district has no concerns. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. Staff are recommending the application be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that satisfactory securities be submitted for stormwater management and grading works. Two, that it be demonstrated that all exterior lighting fixtures will be dark sky, dark sky compliant. And three, that minor variance application A-65-20 be approved to grant a variance from the maximum height requirements of 35 feet and that the approval be finalized or that the height of the building be reduced in compliance with the zoning bylaw. Please note that minor variance application A-65-20 was requesting the height variance was approved um, by Committee of Adjustment on Monday, March 8th. Staff have no further comments and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Walker. Uh, I think Mr. Newlands is here, Lauren, to- Yep, we have Mr. Newland, Newland and we also have his agent, Melinda Hubbard. Okay, I didn't have that recorded down. So maybe would Ms. Hubbard be the one who would like to start here? I'll let her in. Thank you. Well, you could probably let both of them in. So Ms. Hubbard, are, is, I can't see you, but I think you're in. Sorry, I'll join the video. One second. There we go. Hi. Okay. Hi I don't think you. we have any additional comments to add at this time, other than what Kaylin's are, or Caitlin, sorry, has already outlined, um, okay. unless you guys have any specific questions. Okay, that's great. So for you or for Jordy, welcome, Jordy. All right. So then committee, do we have any questions on this particular application? Questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Zavitz, was that a hand? It was. Please, thank you, and through you. Just a question to uh, the owner, I suppose. Uh, will this building with this uh, increased height be visible from the river as, as I pull in for gas or whatever? Will it be visible uh, to passers-by in their boats? Sorry? It will be any more visible than any of the buildings that are surrounding it at the time. It won't be any, <clears throat> any bigger than the shop building that is right on the waterfront as well. Good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Zavitz, maybe you could put your hand down. Thank you. Okay. Also, yeah, note that all the surrounding businesses, including the marinas, pro lines, Shervin, have all, uh, are all behind this 100%. Well, we don't have many questions here, so I'm going to put that, 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 yeah, that usually, that usually means that. Uh, so I'm going to um, read the motion. Councillor Nishikawa, uh, moved by Councillor Nishikawa, seconded by Councillor Roberts. Be it resolved that Planning Committee recommends to Township Council that Site Plan Application SPA-09-21-265-4465 Ontario Inc. Roll number 5-3-078-03 be approved subject to the following one. The satisfactory securities be submitted for stormwater management and grading works. Two, that it be demonstrated that exterior lighting fixtures will be dark sky compliant. And three, 
that minor variation application A-65-20265465 Ontario Inc. be approved to grant a variance from the maximum height requirement of 35 feet and that the approval be finalized. I'm going to take out the or that the height of the building be reduced because I do, do not believe that that committee has any, any concerns about that. Please let me know if anybody does at this point. Okay, that's that's removed. So it'll be, uh, the variance will be granted. Um, if, an, if, if a corresponding site plan agreement has not been executed by April 14th, 2022, this approval will be, will have been deemed to have expired. Any comments committee? All in favor? I believe that's unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. And we're on to the next one. And Miss Walker, I believe that you are on again. So please thank take it away. Sir, the next application to be heard is site plan agreement 13-21 in the name of Water and Ice Limited. The subject property is known municipally as Three Lock Street East. I would direct committee's intention to the submitted site plan on page 286 of the agenda package. A site plan agreement application has been submitted to permit the installation of three 160 square foot storage containers. The containers will be used as retail stores. Three submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. The public works department has no concerns. The second submission is by Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official. The development services department has no objections, but has commented that a building permit would be required for any structural modifications of the storage containers and any other use other than storage will be required to be compliant with the Ontario building code regulations. The third submission is by Craig Douglas, the district of Muskoka manager of development engineering. The district has no concerns. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. Staff are recommending that the application be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that it be demonstrated in exterior lighting, that exterior lighting fixtures will be dark sky compliant. Two, that a provision be included in the agreement requiring the storage containers to be removed by December 14th, 2024. And three, that securities be received for the cost of the removal of the storage containers. Staff have no further comments at this time, and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, committee, any questions? Uh, Councilor Zavitz? Thank you, and through you, Chair, uh, to uh, you know, Councilor Edwards, if I might. So knowing that this has been through uh, Committee of Adjustment and we find it in front of us today, um, I wonder if we could speak to any commentary back when this was considered. In terms, I, I guess even in terms of how convinced are we this is a good idea when we give it four years and then it's got to come out. Uh, Councillor Edwards, would you like to answer that? Uh, uh, yeah, um, the uh, committee adjustment did have uh, concerns, though they uh, did uh, approve it. Uh, because it was temporary. And if you look from the, the, the lake, there's a big stone uh, and, and that retaining wall that sort of hides it from, from the street view. And because it was for, for, uh, for uh, the water rock concerns, both the storage containers and everything else like that. I, I think it's Councillor Edwards who's freezing, right? Everybody else is good. Okay, well, we would come back to him, but I think I, I know um, I spoke with Mr. Sharp about this and uh, also uh, Councillor Hayes, you with with the, oh, Councillor Edwards back. Sorry, you, fro you froze on us. Would you like to finish saying what you were saying? Uh, well, I, I was just saying that we didn't have the, uh, the uh, same concerns being that it was only for four years uh, and that that it, it came before the heritage and that and um, because it was temporary and that because that was a heritage and that storage of, of uh, boats and that there it would be going back at some, some time so they did uh, say it was all right at this point for four years thank you okay that was the point I was going to get 
uh, Councillor Hayes to make, but um, uh, um, Mr. Newlands, would you like to say something? Yeah, on the temporary thing, the reason it's temporary is because there is a plan to develop that site uh, in the near future. So this is a temporary retail space until that development uh, will come forth to you guys shortly. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Kelly. Sorry, through you, I'm struggling with the technology here. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Newland's last answer was my first question, why the four years? Uh, and, and it was a little unclear. Heritage said they wanted something to soften the blow of what was put there. Our committee of adjustment determined that that had been done. At least I'm just taking this from the write up. Uh, so I'm not sure what I see here that softens the blow and makes this uh, something that Councillor Hayes and her Heritage Committee uh, feel uh, is appropriate for the heritage designation on that site. Councillor Hayes? I think in the, in the heritage meeting, we had talked about um, plants being placed around the outside of the building. And of course, this is just the red rendering of the building itself, not what's going to be around it. Um, and we had made that suggestion to, because it is very modular that we could soften the blow with uh, plants in vases or portable gardens kind of thing. Uh, Councillor Kelly, that answers your question. Yes, thanks. Okay, um, I, I have a question um, and it may be to Mr. Sharp or actually to you, Mr. Newlands, because these, these are much prettier than what's in Manette, but Manette is a marina. It does have these, these pop-ups, whatever. And have we actually approved those once before through, through our planning department for those to be allowed on site in Manette? I'm just looking for a precedent here. So I don't know, Mr. Sharp, if you might be the one to answer that. Through you, Chair Bridgman, um, I did do some investigations this morning and I'm, I'm not aware of any building permits being issued uh, for those units. Perhaps uh, Mr. Newlands could clarify. The, okay, great. the building okay. permits have been sitting at the Township of Muskoka Lakes for the last several years, waiting for you guys to approve them when the bylaw is lifted on the building permits being issued in the Township of Muskoka Lakes. For the uh, minute. Okay, yeah. so, so uh, that's been a while now. So I think we need to internally go back and have a look at that then, Mr. Newlands. Yeah, we've done all the necessary paperwork. They've been, uh, you know, inspected uh, with Mr. Pink. Um, so everything should be in order. Everything is is there, ready to go, uh, submitted years ago. So it probably got caught up somewhere in the internal or the uh, the bylaw. The so okay, uh, that was yep. just a question of mine because that's yep. obviously the same pattern as what's in the net with the pop ups. Anybody else have a comment? I have one more question. Then are they they are going to be this dark color? Because I like the dark color. Oh well. <laughs> We, we, were, we were thinking we can go the dark color. The dark color is a lot hotter uh, for the people that will be working inside. But um, we were thinking about a, a plain, you know, neutral white beige color because everyone's concerned that it needs to blend into that big concrete wall there. Um, so the, uh, not as a bold color, uh, might go a little bit better. We have not ordered them finalize them yet uh but we are going to be doing so probably this afternoon so okay i i hear you i think the white uh, blends more I, I, i've got that now um councillor zavitz uh thank you through you at the risk of being argumentative i mean I, I think it's one thing to have a few of these in the nether regions of uh of one of our lakes it's quite another thing again to have it in our very hub of the muskoka lakes and so i certainly won't be supporting this Any other comments? Uh, Mayor Harding? Thank you. You saw my virtual hand before the uh, e-hand. 
I, I will say, um, and I appreciate that we're going to uh, paint these to sort of blend into the surrounding of downtown Port Carling. Um, one of the unique things that's happened, and as much as we may or may not like shipping containers, Manette Pop-Up Village has become a cornerstone of Muskoka Lakes. And people are traveling there to have another retail shopping experience. And I have yet to hear in my travels a negative comment on that pop-up village that's gone on over there. Um, so I, I just, I'll make that comment and that I will support this as this goes forward. Councillor Mazan. Thank you, and through you, I was having some technical problems there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, I mean, clearly we're coming off the heels of a, a really interesting conversation and, you know, hearing from our director of planning that this is an emerging trend. Um, I guess my, I'm trying to understand my reaction to these two. And I think, um, while we wait for our official plan policies to get strengthened in this area, I could maybe just ask and encourage the applicant, Mr. Newlands and team, um, they know Muskoka well, they know what we're looking for here to make sure that not only does it blend, but it complements. Uh, I mean, I, I understand Councillor Zavitt's concern. You're coming into uh, one, a world known destination on, a, on our boats and we wanna make sure that that area is reflected of it. So, um, you know, I see in the renderings, I think my initial thought was, oh, I do like the darker color if I'm looking at that. But I guess my comment would be around facade and, and just making sure you honor the, the, the feeling and the vibe and the, um, the, the character of that entire area. Um, you know, when we talk about heritage, heritage is now planters, it seems. Um, so I, I just throw that responsibility maybe back to you um, that, uh, I, I guess I'm having that conflict myself. I want to support. I want to support businesses. I want to support the area. Um, I can see that in some ways this could really add to the area if it's done well. So yeah, I, I guess I put that responsibility um, back to you. A hundred percent. We want something to look good. Like we're not trying to make something look crappy, right? That's not in our business model, right? Um, there is a very ugly concrete wall right there right now. Anything is going to be better than that concrete wall. Um, we have iconic Canadian brands that are ready to move in here that are going to bring economic development to Port Carling. Do you think an iconic Canadian brand like Roots is going to set up shop in some dingy shipping container that doesn't go with their brand, right? Same with Lululemon. That, that's not their brand, right? So we will make sure that it fits with you know, our culture and, and with Muskoka because that's very, very important to us. Okay, and if I might comment uh, in terms of Mayor Harding and, and Manette, uh, Jordi, I think you've done all you can at this point in time in Manette with, with, with the pop-ups and making them look really nice and stuff. I, I know going forward, it's going to be even better than that. So uh, I can appreciate your attempt to make it look as good as it can when it's a temporary basis on that property. Um, Councillor Jaglowitz. Uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I can support this because it's temporary in nature. I also have a question for uh, uh, Director Pink. Can I assume that as in the previous um, uh, matter we dealt with that was deferred, these renderings will be part attached to the site plan approval and therefore the building department will ensure something similar to this is, uh, is what appears there. Uh, Director Pink. Thank you, uh, through you, uh, that is correct. It would be the same as the previous. I think it might be helpful um, as much as we don't typically get into colors. Um, the elevations are dark. They've indicated they may be white. I, I sense some committee members were fine with that, but I'm not sure if that was a, a general consensus. Some, uh, some direction in that regard may be helpful so that if white is appropriate, we can ensure the proper elevations get attached. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Nishikawa. Thank you. Um, you know, mostly I just, I know we're hearing this is temporary, but I just keep seeing the direction of development uh, in the area going seasonal. 
and that in fact we are not looking at trying to um, encourage business year round. Um, and that just really concerns me because uh, we aren't dis discussing it. And, and it's very interesting we talk about the CCANs because a number of months ago I, I had asked a staff report on this. And I, I, I would say that there was not a, an interest or a concern from the rest of the committee, but I think that there still needs to be a better understanding of what happens when uh, one of these units gets placed on a property and a neighboring property and all of those other issues that uh, go along. And, and so that may not be this particular application, but I would say again, my concern is that we are encouraging uh, retail seasonal only. And th that distresses me because I don't believe that that is um, good growth or good planning for our township to be sustainable year round. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Zavitz. Thank you, and I, I, I do wanna be clear, I'm certainly not against uh, SWS and everything that they try to do and uh, have been supporting them for years. My, my hang up is, is basically, I go up there, I fill my boat with 400 bucks worth of gas, I spend 375 at Windermere and then I go back at, for dinner and then I come back through Port Carling, go through the locks and the friends I'm with say, well, what's that? Well, what, what's in those containers? And, and, and Jordy, with all due respect, you know, yes, those are preeminent uh, Canadian retailers. Lululemon's in there and, and Roots is in there. I just don't know why you're not coming up to us with a, a request for permits uh, to build a, a, a permanent wooden structure like everybody else does. And I, I, I don't like the temporary the nature of this. That's, this is what's happening in the township of Muskoka Lakes, I believe. Uh, I think it follows with Councillor Nishikawa's comments. Um, this is incredibly brutally temporary. And even to your words, there's an ugly cement wall there. Well, that wall is there to hold up Port, Port Carling or else it's going to go dripping into the, into the river. So, you, you know, the, the defense of it's not the location. I love that you bought the place. I love you, Pump Gas. I love you guys. But I, I just think in that location, um, uh, it's the, that's the main highway. Uh, how many people see that every day? Why isn't there uh, a plan right now for us? And why hasn't there been a plan for us to look or for you to look at with our building department uh, of a formal building there that we wouldn't even be having this discussion? And I, I, I'm concerned about that. Four years. I mean, Let's go plan on temporary. It, 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 I would say it's coming. I would say the reason why, honestly, it is so difficult to get anything done in this township, respectfully, right? I'm, I'm trying to build a, a storage building. I've been trying to put these shipping containers in for two years. Do you know how much time, money, energy I have gone into? Just tiny little shipping containers. Imagine an entire development. It's Don't yell at us. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not yelling, but it, the, the amount of time and energy is exhausting, right? And I don't have that time or the expertise. I'm trying to bring some economic development, cheap, cheerful retail. Yes, I agree, it's not year round. I would love everything to be year round in Port Carling, but the town and, and stuff right now is not supporting that year round type business. So this is on the water, it's a marina. It can't be open year round anyways, even if we wanted to. Um, so it fits, it fits in there. Uh, and yes, there is a plan and it is going through the process to be developed, but it takes a long time to put all those little tiny pieces together. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kelly? Uh, thank you and uh, through you. I, I, I wanna just make it uh, clear what my concern is. And my concern is nothing to do with location or or uh, the use of the property is everything to do with the fact that once, and it's the same concern I raised, it's not exactly the same concern, but almost the same concern I raised a minute ago about the other property on uh, Joseph Street. Once this becomes okay, nobody's ever gonna invest the time and energy it takes to put down permanent roots or rehab and renovate a hundred year old building like the, uh, you know, the like that's been done at the Muskoka Emporium or Brown's Appliances or any of those other structures. Those places are better off, if this becomes the new norm, those places are better off tumbled down and replaced with sea cans. And if you don't like them, hook up a truck and haul them somewhere else. 
I don't mean if you don't like them, if it doesn't work. I, I think our, uh, our core urban centers deserve the, 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 the perception and the uh, uh, suggestion of permanence. Uh, year round is important, as Councillor Nishigawa has suggested, but I understand that the, the trick of being a year round business up here. Um, and I think this opens the gate and opens the door to, I think, what I just heard was cheap and cheery retail. And uh, I don't think cheap and cheery retail belongs in, um, I don't think it's part of the fabric of what we traditionally believe is Muskoka. And maybe, maybe uh, you know, Councillor Zevitt said he's an old fart or not an old fart. Well, I am. And I've been an old fart since I was 13. Uh, I don't think we need to make these kinds of changes to the core center of uh, our traditional, I, I hate the word downtowns, but the downtown core, the, uh, the only uh, core shopping areas that we have or retail uh, areas that we have, suddenly it becomes more effective to build cheap and, and temporary and, and cheery, I think were the, the words. And uh, that's not how I envision the future of um, Port Carling, uh, Bala, of uh, Milford Bay, of Port Sandfield, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that's my concern. So I'm going to suggest it, that maybe we say it has to be renewed after four years. Maybe we say there is no renewal. Because what I've heard Mr. Newland say is he is going to build something permanent there. But for now, those pop-ups will bring dollars into Port Carling in the summer. It's just a comment. Yeah, okay. And I'm making Sorry. sure there will not be a real estate office going in there. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes, I see you, Councillor Zavitz. Thank you. And my last comment, um, again, to this, and Jordy, I know, I know this is hard. It's hard for all of us. Uh, I know when you say cheap and cheerful, uh, we have a situation in Bala last, all of last summer, and I suspect it'll be back, and it's a 35-foot pontoon boat with T-shirts hanging all over it. And, and that is parked at a dock in Bala, and they spend all their time every day, all summer, driving around with cheap and cheerful retail, coming to people's docks, asking them if you want to buy $75 sweatshirts that say something on it. I probably shouldn't say what it says on it, so I won't, because it would name the people. Point being is this is a very organized, concerted effort to have a retail. So you, t you talk about economic development. They're out there. Uh, not, you know, they're not even charging tax, I happen to know. So they're just out there taking what they can get. And, and so I think what, what happens when we put these time limits on things, it screams temporary. It absolutely screams, I'm only here for the short term. And I will take what we can get and then we'll leave. And if that's that's not really a Roots business model, wherever I've seen a Roots, it sure isn't Lululemon. Um, they're here, you're, you know, they're here. They, they can create an environment where they can sell an incredible amount of product in a summer. I, I get it, you know I get it, I support you. The point is um, I'm looking for something permanent. Okay, I don't like people driving around the lake selling things off, out of boats. Th th this will be the next thing. If this doesn't go, what, what will you do? Will you get three pontoon boats? One's Lululemon, one's Roots? Because you know, I'm, what I understand, we can't stop that. I'm, I'm safe, harmless. So, so hang on, guys. Can we go back to what's in front of us? We're going. We're getting really, really far uh, afield here. I, I understand your point, Councillor Zavitz, but we're way off track here. So I, I want to get us back on track. So, Councillor Hayes. I was just going to um, make a suggestion to Jordy th through you that when he does do his permanent development, that you look to the far future and make the units uh, four season habitable. And then that way, when the uh, retail catches up to four season demand, you're ready to go. One, one hundred percent. Like that, that is the goal. Great. Mayor Harding. Thank you. And um, I'll circle back to support of the application. And I, I don't disagree with anybody's comments about more permanency um, within our core. A year round business, uh, those people know for 10 years plus, I've talked about Muskoka 365 and that year round. Um, cheap and cheerful, though, sometimes is a way to get some business. Probably one of the most successful businesses in Port Carling is Pete's Hot Dogs. 
you don't get much more temporary than a shelter in a parking lot. We have a massive million dollar building, as I commented in a couple applications ago at the corner of Ferndale Road and 118, year round beautiful, overbuilt, and he can't rent it out. There's a bunch of other retail shops because of costs associated that can't be rented out. I appreciate what's going on and it is a means to an end. The more demand, the more we can get retail, the more happening. Heaven forbid, Jordy gets to bring a little bit of the vibe that's been going on at Manette to downtown Port Carling and we can extend the season and we can do more and we can do more. And when we come to an application to build this out, I've heard today, it's gonna be a four season. I, I, I do know there's not a lot of boat traffic coming into Port Carling though in December and January and February. Um, but let's hope that people decide to go down and do some retail shopping there. So, um, you know, this is a way to get some business happening, to uh, get to the final development and uh, look at things going forward. So, um, as I say, I don't have a problem with it. And again, if it's a, if they're black sea cans or they're white sea cans, I'm flexible on that color, uh, just not lime green. Thanks. Okay, I, I think we'll probably leave the color up to uh, up to the applicant and I am going to read the motion. Moved by Councillor Nishikawa, seconded by Councillor Mazam, be it resolved that planning committee recommends to Township Council that site plan application SPA-13-21, Water and Ice Limited, roll number 5-5-049, be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that it be demonstrated that exterior lighting fixtures will be dark sky compliant. Two, that a provision be included in the agreement requiring the storage containers to be removed by December 14th, 2024. And three, that securities be received for the cost of the removal of the storage containers. If a corresponding site plan agreement has not been executed by April 14th, 2022, this approval will have been deemed to have expired. Comments? Okay, all in favor? Madam Clerk, I think that's seven. I believe I believe so. If yes, if you call for the opposed, I will. All opposed. And one maybe not voting. Two two opposed and one maybe not voting. Okay, so that's carried. Yes. It, okay, that carries. All right, thank you very much. So just because we've been talking about containers, I have to tell you that our Mr. Sharp has been very sharp over lunch hour, and he contacted uh, the owner, Peter Balance, uh, about the one we were deferring, the application we were deferring, and Mr. Balance is more than happy to chat with us about this. So I would like your indulgence to bring it back into the meeting right now so we can deal with it today if we get answers. Councillor Nishikawa. Thank you. I was not prepared for this planning meeting to be an all day event. Um, I, I think that if the applicant wasn't prepared to uh, bring his application forward and be present, that I, I, I don't believe that you, uh, unless you guys can carry on, but I have to run my own business. So I can't be at this meeting all day. Well, I gather there was a mix up in communication. I don't think it was an, a, 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 an effort to, to not be here. And we do have other things still on, on the agenda, Councillor Nishikawa, but I will ask uh, that was my point, though, that I'm prepared to listen to the rest of the agenda. I right. wasn't prepared to extend it on for a further long discussion about that application because it will end up being a long discussion about that application. And, and that's fine. That's why I just brought it up. But we're going to figure out if we want to do that or not. So who would like to circle back and look at this or would we like to leave it as deferred at this moment? So I'm going to take a uh, councillor. I mean, not Councillor Mayor Harding. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, I understand uh, Councillor Shikawa's comments. Um, and maybe we could just maybe have a, a two minute introduction without questions from the applicant to understand his vision. Might be an idea, um, just sort of as a bit of a hybrid. And obviously we've deferred it and it'll be circling back, but it, I, I wouldn't mind having a 30 day pause, which we're gonna have anyway, but just to get an idea of the vision of exterior and is it just white 
plaiting or is there something a little more to it? That would be my suggestion. Okay, would, would council like to, committee like to hear from the owner at this point in time? Can I get either a yes or a no? No, no, I don't think so. I think we're deferred and we will carry on as deferred. So, okay, then our next, get to our next our next uh, point is long range planning. And I believe that would be Mr. Moore with a uh, special projects, <coughs> our um, economic development specialist with our temporary patio extensions. Welcome Mr. Moore. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. Good afternoon, committee. Uh, yes, as uh, Chair Bridgman introduced it, today's report provides an overview of extending the temporary uh, patio program that we implemented last year to help support the restaurant uh, sector. As committee is aware, last year we uh, implemented the program uh, in an effort to help restaurants during COVID-19 restrictions. Um, with an understanding currently of our current COVID-19 restrictions and moving forward, um, we've just brought forward the report to extend the program once again through 2021. Um, as highlighted, existing agreement holders um, will, uh, will receive the extension and uh, any new applications will go through uh, the similar process um, as those last year. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, we all have the um, motion in front of us. Are there any questions? Okay, Madam Clerk, can I not read this motion seeing as we're, it's in front of us? Oh, I'm sorry, we have Councillor Mazan is asking a question or a comment. Uh, quick question. Uh, I, I think I'm uh, answering my own question though. So if it was a new applicant, it's $100, Corey, and the previous is 20? Like I'm just uh, trying to make this as easy as possible. This sector is the one that's been hit probably the hardest. Yeah. And I would love to make this as easy as possible for these businesses. Agreed. So any agreements that were in place last year, they technically ended at the end of 2020. So existing agreement holders, as long as there's no changes, we can provide the extension to that agreement um, with no cost. The $20 fee is just if there are minimal changes to their application. And then, yeah, any new applications would go through the same process as last year with the $100 fee. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, Madam Clerk, do I need to read this whole motion? Sorry. Well, I'm you're, picking you're up on what- to read it? Well, I'm picking up on what Mayor Harding said yesterday when he had a really long one in front of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, do I really need to read this all because there's no changes to it? Well, if it's the consensus of the committee that that is um, okay, then. Okay. So you should just announce the mover and the seconder though and well, call it. I will, I will. Oh, thank you. Okay, moved by Mayor Harding, uh, seconded by Councillor Jaglowitz. Uh, you have this motion in front of you. Basically, it's the extension of our of our patios uh, dealing with COVID. So any discussion? All in favor? That is unanimous. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, we have nothing uh, from Heritage and Attainable Housing, nothing from Development Services that I know of. Uh, any, no unfinished business, any new business from anyone? Okay, I have two items under new business actually. And um, the first one is that I would like to, um, I discussed this with, with Director Pink and, and uh, actually Mr. Sharp last week. I, I would like us to have be able to give some direction or at least a little bit of discussion in terms of our building, our sheds that are now becoming three, four and 5,000 feet and becoming second residences on our waterfront properties. And uh, I, I know uh, there is one that is now in compliance. There's, there's others that I know of. And so what I had said was this, I don't believe this can wait until our new official plan goes through 
and also the new comprehensive zoning bylaws because that's two or three years from now. So I would like to propose that we direct staff, but Mr. Pink tells me he was already started on it. So I'm going to let him speak in a minute uh, to bring forward uh, new bylaws that will control what's happening with our, with our uh, quote sheds at this point in time so that they cannot become inhabitable after we've put our stamp on the shed and moved on. Um, so Mr. Pink, maybe I can turn it over to you for a little bit more. Thank you, Chair. Um, certainly happy to provide a, a bit of background uh, for committee. Uh, currently, there's nothing in the zoning by law that regulates uh, the size of an accessory building, uh, save for the overall lot coverage permitted on the property. And as committee knows, uh, our bylaws and our official plan quite strictly limits the number of dwellings and the number of sleeping cabins on a property. Uh, historically, uh, certainly, uh, you know, we're uh, aware that there, there may be the odd uh, smaller bunkie uh, or storage space above a garage that may be inhabited from time to time. And it's always been uh, a challenge to enforce uh, those provisions. Uh, what staff is noting uh, on some uh, more recent building permits is those buildings are now starting to increase significantly in size, uh, where uh, we are seeing building permits applied for uh, several thousand square feet uh, with multiple rooms, with multiple bathrooms, with wraparound sun decks, uh, glazing and windows around the whole building. Um, but on paper, they're fully compliant with the zoning bylaw. They're labeled storage uh, and they comply completely with lot coverage and setbacks. Uh, staff has concerns uh, regarding the future use of those, uh, in particular, uh, whether the septic systems are sized accordingly uh, and related concerns. So staff uh, was planning to bring a report, uh, likely uh, if we're able to uh, workload wise at some point uh, this year, hopefully spring and summer, uh, to have a discussion in front of committee and uh, potentially propose uh, an amendment to the zoning bylaw to have some greater control around accessory building structures. Uh, so instead of constantly trying to enforce the use of these buildings after the fact, uh, try to get ahead of the curve and prevent their construction in the first place. Uh, the only thing I would um, clarify uh, in the chair's comments, I do not believe, although certainly it would depend on how the draft bylaw is worded, I don't believe we necessarily have to wait for the official plan review. Uh, this can be done uh, if committee recalls, staff brought forward a report on sport courts about a year or two or so ago. We recognize that those were being constructed in close proximity to the waterfront. Uh, staff also brought forward a report on legal non-complying uh, structures uh, and some new legal interpretations we've had on those sections. Uh, this could be dealt with in a similar manner where we could go immediately to have a public meeting on a revised zoning bylaw amendment which will be certainly much quicker than waiting for the official plan review and then a subsequent zoning review uh, to occur. So uh, one possibility, uh, we did pass the sport court bylaw, if we can call it that. Um, staff still has yet to prepare uh, the bylaw and schedule a public meeting on the legal non-compliant structures. Depending on how this uh, discussion goes today, uh, we can certainly roll into that uh, potentially uh, some greater controls on accessory buildings. Although again, the intention was to bring back a, a staff report for your review in the future, but uh, Councilor Bridgman uh, uh, beat us to it and uh, recognized uh, the issue. So hopefully that provides some context and background and certainly um, I'll do my best to answer any questions committee has. Councilor Jaglowitz. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'd just like to note that I fully support this initiative and I think it should proceed. Thank you for bringing it forward. Okay, anybody else have any comments? Okay, so if I could, Director Pink, I, I'm not sure if I, I heard this correctly. We, you, you're bringing a, a report forward and then it'll go out with our grandfathered, uh, the, the, grand, the grandfathered uh, bylaws or you put it out without a staff report? I'm uh, sorry, I may have misunderstood what you were saying. Thank you. I can clarify. So there's essentially two largely options. If the committee wishes, staff can come back with a staff report that frames the issue, uh, provide some background, similar as we did with the other two matters, 
uh, and then get direction formally from committee uh, to hold a public meeting and to prepare a bylaw. Uh, alternatively, yeah, if you wish to somewhat expedite it, uh, you can leave it largely in staff's hands. We can craft uh, a bylaw and host a public meeting. I think uh, my suggestion to you, uh, this has been raised in the past in an effort to try to control uh, the matter and it has been met with some pretty strong opposition from the development community. Uh, this may be worthwhile putting on an agenda and having a discussion and clear direction from a committee uh, rather than having it land on your desk at a potentially contentious public meeting sometime this summer. Um, so again, those are largely the two options. I'm uh, certainly at uh, uh, committee's discretion as to which you prefer. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Councillor Edwards. Uh, this is a problem and we should bring it forward as soon as possible. And that uh, I'll leave it to the uh, and that Mr. Pink and that, but I think it, it uh, should be looked into and, and we should have something out for it for this summer so that uh, we can have a public meeting. Thank you. So I'm gathering that you would say to expedite it, Councillor Edwards will leave it with the planning department and put it out for public input. Okay, I've, I've got that. Um, Mayor Harding. Um, thank you. Uh, before it does go to public, I think, you know, we've, we've had enough discussions around this table that talk about uh, our council doesn't, until we approve something, we don't want something to go to the public. And I'd like to really understand uh, what's going to be in, uh, included in this. You know, if we decide to limit sizes of buildings and things like that, uh, we may in effect, some people have some significantly large properties, be capping their lot coverage at a super low number by doing so. Um, so, you know, I think the devil's obviously in the detail and I'd really like to understand the staff report and staff's recommendations on how to manage. There's no question there's issues, um, but uh, how we attack those issues um, are gonna obviously be uh, uh, interesting. And I'll leave that to the challenge of uh, Director Pink. Okay, so um, yeah, I get maybe a straw vote here. Would we like, oh, uh, uh, Councillor Edwards? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I still think that staff report can come forward to us to look at before we put it out, out, out to the public, but it should be expedited as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay, I think we have, a, we have agreement here in terms of direction for you, Director Pink, um, on, your, on your plate, as soon as you can move it to the front of the plate, that would be lovely. And uh, we'll, we'll hope that there could be a public meeting this summer for all of, all of these. Okay, um, that's great. Thank you for that. I have one more item, which has come to my attention. Uh, somebody's got something going in the background here. Oh, Councillor Edwards, could you turn your oh. microphone off, please? Sorry. Thank you. No, that's okay. Um, Jane, would you mind putting those pictures up on the screen? I think David was going to do that. Oh, okay. Well, David, because a picture's worth a thousand words, as we heard last time about the Bell Towers. And it happens to be my segue into this. This, what you're looking at with these three pictures, are the new Starlink satellite dishes. Uh, Musk's new, new uh, internet. So you might notice from this that there is no tree cover around any of these. So I got to thinking about this as it's starting to roll out up in our area and also our bell tower that was 400 feet uh, um, up last time above, above the tree line. So if you will indulge me for a minute at our December meeting of the Perry Sound Muskoka broadband initiative, which I'm, I'm still actually a member of, we had a report on, uh, on they're actually called lower earth orbit satellites, these satellites that go around. And they, um, they're faster because they're, they're, they're closer to earth. They're part of a toolbox for, for the needs of Canadians, but there are some limitations on them. And one of the big ones is because it's a satellite and the satellites take about 15 minutes to go across the horizon and then the dish automatically comes back and picks up the next one. Um, they can't have barriers of things like trees and poles and that kind of thing. So you need direct light to 
to have these things work properly. And, and uh, uh, snow and whatever can be an issue, but that's not my main part. My main part is you need a clear vision of this. And I have to admit, all I could see after that was these sitting on top of boathouses roofs, sitting on docks, sitting on shorelines where there is no tree cover, or somebody with, with great initiative, because we seem to have that here, building a stand up above the trees so that they could put this thing on top of their stand to feed their, their internet needs at their house. And I, for one, do not want to see that. So I thought I would introduce this to you because I'm hoping to get ahead of the curve here this time that we can put some things in place so that we're not going to see these satellite dishes. And they are, they are not, I, I'm gonna go into part two now. They are not the end all and be all because they're $800 for the package. It's 130 bucks per month now and they're subsidized. So we're not talking about essential service for all of our, all of our community. There is no way many, many of our residents could ever afford this even if they had a clear vision to the sky. So it's simply another option, but it's an option that um, I am hoping the district and our township, when we look at essential services, will look at fiber and then a combination of a whole bunch of things to reach people. So that's the end of my soliloquy. Anyway, I'm really concerned that we're going to start seeing these things on structures or whatever. And I really wanted to bring it forward as a discussion um, for this committee and thoughts and, and input actually. So now I'm going to uh, see what everybody has to say about this. Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you and through you. Uh, I was going to ask how they perform in the snow since they're only about a foot off the ground, but you answered that. Uh, since the technology, the satellite technology would appear to be, I mean, I, I'm not a specialist in this, but would appear to be the same as the satellite radio technology. And that seems to work pretty darn well, except in the rock cut. Uh, I'm surprised there's an issue with, I mean, I could drive my car just about anywhere and listen to a, satell a serious satellite radio without interruption. Like I said, the, the rock cut being the only exception that comes to mind. I'm kind of surprised they need that much clear airspace above them. I'm surprised that bolting them on your chimney above your house wouldn't give you adequate coverage. Uh, I, I get satellite radio here in the house. Same sort of thing. It doesn't cut in and out when the satellite goes over, or I, I, I maybe I'm missing something, and maybe the technology is very different. But it just seems to me that it ought to work better than it sounds like it's going to work. Well, all I can tell you is what I've been told. And these dishes move. It's not like your other dishes that are stationary and pointed at something. So that may be part of it. And I mean, at this point in time, he doesn't have that many satellites in the sky. So I think you only get one choice of one going across the sky. And so that is part of it. I say my concern is seeing these things all over our landscape. So, um, Councillor Hayes. Yes, I was just going to ask uh, council if they could remember when the first satellite dishes came in, they were uh, 10 foot parabolic units set on a, a, a 10 foot pole in your backyard and they needed a line of sight as well. and uh, they were there, but they weren't that intrusive. And as they worked on it, they came down in size and the technology got better. I understand that these units are self-heated, so you don't have to worry about clearing the snow on them so they can be mounted um, in a rooftop area. Um, but I think that if this is something that's, uh, it, it size-wise, just so that I understand, what is the difference in size between that and my satellite dish for my television? I think it's probably a little bigger. What I showed you, what the, what the picture showed you is how it's mounted on a, on a platform or it has a mounting base for a, a roof. I think my concern is because we have so many people who now have TVs in their boathouses even, uh, my concern is that they're going to be mounted on boathouses and and on on docks and I mean that's just me I'm one vote or one concern but I really wanted to bring it forward so that so that it's um so we know where council stands on those kinds of things I guess so 
I don't know if that answered your question. Uh, Councillor Zavitz. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Uh, certainly, uh, what a hot topic, and um, I think one only needs to deal with both Rogers and Bell to realize that any alternative from Elon Musk will be the way of the future. Uh, I can tell you that I have lost my mind with, with Bell, and I'm here on public forum. Uh, the other day, my machine used 175 gig, and I was in Waterloo. So these people, and you know, the, the challenge with what I would suggest as a business solution is we as a council, uh, you know, adopt a, a more of a business perspective and, and actually invite people like Bell Rogers and all the other ones locally to come make some sort of a presentation. And, and uh, you know, it, it, this is all about service delivery. Uh, the service up here for internet is brutal. It's at the very minimum, it's inconsistent and it's forcing people. I, I, all, this is all over Facebook. People are, they can't wait to spend a thousand dollars to get on the satellite system. And trust me, it's coming. So to your point, Councillor Bridgman, um, you're, you're right to point it out. This is only going to be, and they're going to be everywhere because that's the nature of the beast. So I think we do need to talk about it. So, Councillor Zavitz, would you, I mean, I think what I'm looking for or asking people to say, are we going to say, well, just, just buy your, just buy your home then. Like if you can make it work, that's great, but we're not interested in seeing these on boathouses. I think my concern is the visual part because uh, we're trying to protect our Muskoka as we've just finished talking about. Um, Councillor Mazan? Thank you, and through you, um, I do know some people who have purchased them, and in fact, they will be putting them on their boathouse because that's where they get their service. So um, that's point number one. But I do believe, um, or I'm asking maybe the question, uh, last month when we had discussion around the towers, um, and I'd asked the question, could we strengthen our, our policy as it related to the Bell Rogers the more traditional route tower policy. Um, I do think we need to strengthen this portion of it because, uh, um, so I, I guess I am supporting the idea of what you're suggesting, uh, Chair Bridgman. I just would wonder if we want to look at it as a whole. Like it's almost it, like it's one service. We're trying to improve broadband access. People are gonna have different choices. Um, and what is it that we're trying to actually accomplish in that? So, um, okay, I'm just trying to accomplish the fact that I'm not looking at, at dishes when I'm, it's the view, view from the canoe. More than welcome to put it on your property anywhere else, but not here. And I believe we have, just before I go on to Mayor Harding, I know I spoke with both Mr. Sharp and Mr. Pink about this. Mm -hmm. We do have bylaws about nothing except, I think it's antennas above trees. Maybe Mr. Sharp or Mr. Pink, you could help me out. Could we, is there some way we could create a bylaw that, that said you had to be so many feet back from the shoreline and maybe the rest of the committee doesn't well, the, want that? But. Through you, Chair Bridgman. Um, so we do have a couple sections in our zoning bylaw that may be applicable. The first would be with respect to height exceptions for certain types of structures. And a residential radio uh, seems somewhat antiquated these days or TV tower or antenna would be exempt from height requirements. And then there's another section that exempts certain um, uh, items from uh, yard requirements. So side yard setbacks, rear yard setbacks, front yard setbacks, uh, things like drop awnings, flag poles, flag uh, garden trellises, fences, retaining walls, or similar accessory uses. So I think, you know, one could argue that this would be, you know, a similar, a similar type use and would be exempt from, from those front yard and side yard and rear yard setback requirements. I think you may have been on mute, uh, Chair Bridgman. Oh, sorry about that. Director Pink, would you like to comment? I okay. just wanted to add to that. Thank you for outlining the zoning by the requirements. I think maybe to help frame it for a committee there, I see sort of two concerns way it raised. If it's a visual impact of the dish itself, then I think we're into a zoning 
potential change to require them to be set back from the lake uh, or away from certain areas. If the issue is around clearing, then uh, we do have a tree preservation bylaw and it, uh, we could reference that tree removal is not permitted uh, to install a feature or to gain line of sight for these sort of things. So we can um, address it through those two means depending on what the issue is. Uh, I think I think what I'm hearing in the discussion though, I think committee should be cognizant where we talk regularly about internet service. Um, and if this is an ability to provide it, um, I question putting up a lot of roadblocks uh, to then uh, allow that service to be implemented here. So I think you want to balance that and uh, and have a further discussion and parse that out. Um, but certainly staff can come back with with options depending on if there's a desire to address uh, either or or both of those uh, issues. There are tools available um, that we have at our disposal to try to control it. Okay, thank you, Mayor Harding. Um, thank you, and uh, you know I, I'm aware of this technology. I don't know the details. I did a quick Google again. My understanding is the dish needs about a hundred degree field to see. Uh, I don't think that's clear cutting a parking lot or a house section. Um, but I, I, I will say um, we do need increased internet, and if this is going to provide a better broadband connectivity for certain people. I have a hard time standing in the way. I don't want them to clear cut their property. We talk about boathouses. Um, my neighbor's boathouse and my personal boathouse both have a satellite dish attached to the side because it's the only clear line that I get to Bell Express View. If I move it in the woods, I'm clearing trees or I'm putting a tower 100 feet in the air to get a clear line. I happen to have one on the side. I don't like looking at it. I try to tuck it in as best I can so it's not there. Um, from an internet perspective as well, we have uh, businesses around, Lakeland Networks is one of them, that has created what's known as a boathouse network. Um, I have a clear line of sight to their tower, so I have a radio on my boathouse that's integrated in, and then I have a broadcast repeater for anybody who can happen to see my boathouse to be able to share broadband. Um, so in, in effect, I have three towers or three hardware pieces attached to my boathouse between my satellite. Um, I haven't heard a complaint from a neighbor. I, I, I'm the first one that says I would like it to look nice and not stand up. So um, I, I appreciate that we don't want things to look nice. I, again, I've said this before, uh, my neighbor's lime green cottage might be more offensive to me than seeing a satellite dish on the side of his boathouse. Um, so I, I, I struggle, I, I don't mind understanding more information, and I think technology, as I think Councillor has said, is going to change. Um, but heaven forbid we actually provide some more connectivity to people until we can get fiber to cottages or whatever. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Nishikawa. Thank you. Um, I, I'm a little bit, um, I'm, I'm thinking back when I, I had asked, and I'm not sure that it was this term of council or not, but we had a situation where people were putting uh, solar towers on their docks uh, or solar, um, excuse me, sheets. Uh, so, and I'm not even sure that we, uh, we were able to deal with that. And uh, I'm not clear that, um, there, there's a number of other things that I would find offensive. Um, sometimes even people's boats. <laughs> so I, I, I'd be a little concerned about um, like a big sailboat, for instance, stuck at the end of a <laughs> boat house, I don't know. But hey, uh, I, I'd just be a little bit concerned about where this is going. But I'd, I also would ask uh, Mr. Pink if, if this in fact would be in the same conversation as when we talked about the solar panels and them being stuck on a, on a dock out there, I guess. Uh, Mr. Pink. Thank you, uh, through you. Uh, my recollection, uh, we thought again, that was gonna be a re-emerging trend or emergent trend uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, at that time, there was the Green Energy Act and it did exempt uh, basically all legislation, including the Planning Act from controlling those types of features. So we did not uh, really get involved or have any authority to get involved uh, when we did start seeing solar panels. 
unless they approach the municipality for similar to what we do for telecommunication towers, uh, the larger solar farm proposals needed uh, council support to get points um, in a bidding process. So uh, I think in the end, uh, I would look perhaps uh, to others. I, I don't suspect it's a large issue around our lakes. I'm not, uh, I haven't received many complaints. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I don't own waterfront. Um, so, uh, but I, uh, I know at the time the Green Energy Act largely exempted and uh, we don't get many inquiries that I'm aware of uh, more recently to install uh, solar panels. I think again, uh, not to put Mr. Snyder on the spot, but I believe if they're installed as part of a, a roof, um, then they're part of uh, that building permit process and they can be placed on a roof as, as part of the roof. Um, I think uh, the zoning bylaw could become more involved if it's a separate standalone uh, feature or structure somewhere else on the property. And we were concerned about uh, excessive tree removal at that time and uh, I don't believe it came to fruition, but again, I'd perhaps look to others if that is an issue on our lakes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Jaglowitz. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I have a little story and then uh, a comment. Um, 33 years ago when I moved up here, one of the first things I did, I was a water access property in the winter. I rolled in one of those uh, 10 foot dishes uh, to get some communication to the outside world. Um, I think this is the future and I think we should embrace it. Uh, 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 Chair Bridgman, as far as your, your comments about the cost, those are the initial costs. Those costs will come down. Some municipalities are looking at ways of sharing them. They can be put into a small neighborhood and, and four or five places can share them. Um, right now, there's about a thousand satellites up there. Musk has got approval for, I believe, up to 40,000. And that's why this wide window, you're correct, that the satellites are low, they're moving, and therefore it has to track them. But uh, he's just applied for permission now to put, to have the same thing on his cars. I think this is the future. I don't think there's any question about it. I don't think they'll be obtrusive at all. I, I really don't. I think we should embrace it. Uh, that's my feeling. I think it'll do far less damage than uh, trying to run uh, fiber optics to every remote cottage that, that we have here. At least that, 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 that's my opinion. And just before I leave my, my last say here, um, I had a matter that I wanted to bring up to under new business, but because of the length of the meeting, I'm not going to. I brought it up privately with uh, Director Pink and I, I, he knows what I'm talking about. So uh, I hope that will maybe come forward in the future too. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Kelly. I, I, I may be the only one who finds it kind of humorous that we're worried about uh, satellite dishes on boat houses. We just approved the deployment of sea cans on our waterfront. Um, so, uh, you know, with all due respect, I think we pretty much decided anything goes. So uh, uh, I don't know what rights we have, but I think we may have basically signaled to the rest of the world that it's, uh, it's open season. Okay, well, I wanted to bring it up because I'm not sure I want to see satellite dishes on every cottage, but I understand where you're coming from in terms of maybe it is the way of the future and a lot of them won't be on boathouses. They'll probably be near cottages. I just, I think I needed the discussion, I think is what I'm probably trying to say <laughs> more than anything else. So, okay, anybody else? Um, Councillor Jaguars? Do you, oh, Councillor Roberts? Very, very quickly, just thank you, uh, Council, um, Chair, for bringing that up because this is what we need. We need to have these discussions so that we evolve ideas and then when, when, when things do confront us, we're more prepared, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and, and Councillor Jagowitz, you do not wish to bring up whatever you had brought up? Well, uh, uh, since you've uh, mentioned it, uh, I'll just take a minute. I don't want it discussed really because the meeting's gone too long. Yeah. I, I had raised with, uh, with Director um, uh, Pink uh, that I know it's gonna be two or three years before some of our new policies come into play. 
And one of the things that uh, it, it, it goes along with uh, years ago, there was uh, again a zoning bylaw amendment passed that uh, that uh, made it mandatory for on-site management on resorts. And we've talked many times about thinking that there should be mandatory that there be on-site staff housing. And I just think that that might be an item uh, that staff might uh, might want to work on. And maybe it's possible to just bring a standalone forward uh, to, uh, to to enshrine that. And I know it's a complicated subject. And, and the reason I, one of the reasons I, I thought it would be good was also because the latest one we're looking at doesn't provide for that. And uh, Director Pink pointed out to me that yes, it is important, but it was just not high on the priority list. So, so I'll leave it that way. I don't want to discuss it today, but it's something that uh, as Councillor Robert said, I think we, we need to uh, discuss these items and I hope that comes forward to us someday. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm sure it will as we circle back on our resort properties, but I see Director Pink is here and uh, you might get the last word at this meeting, Director Pink. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Don't want to extend it any further, but uh, I just uh, joined uh, as I, I know Councillor Jagowitz uh, want to talk about the issue, just uh, that I am available to answer uh, any questions. I think just very quickly on the on-site management, that certainly could be something that I brought up during the official plan review. I think I'd be more comfortable getting the policies in place for an issue such as that prior to uh, simply a zoning change. And it certainly has come up uh, quite extensively on the Manette to OPA, and I'm sure it will through that public process. Okay, thank you. All right, if there's uh, nothing else, and I, yeah, I know it was a really long meeting. Thank you everybody for hanging in, hanging in here for it. Uh, Councillor, moved by Councillor Zavitz, seconded by Councillor Jaglowitz. Be it resolved that planning committee adjourn at 2.28 p.m. And the next regular meeting of planning committee shall be held on Thursday, April 15th, 2021 at 9 a.m. electronically from the Council Chambers Municipal Offices in Port Carling, Ontario. All in favor? Okay, thanks everybody. Have a good weekend.